In this video I'm going to show you how to remove, clean and replace the carburetor of the Yamaha F2.5 2012 outboard. Stay tuned. Alrighty, let's crack her open. So, catch either end for the cowling. Just lifts up. As usual, one hand is always a bit difficult. But there we go. Lifts out the way. Then what we need to do is take this fuel tank off. Uh, three nuts, one, two, three. They're all 10 mil, nice and easy. So I'll do that now. Always end up using the extension bar. It's just easier to to whip them off like that. I've got quite long threads. But take a minute to whip them out. Alrighty, show you in here. So this um, will come off now, this fuel tank will come off out of here, as you can see it's just the, the fuel pipe comes down here into the side of the carb, so we've got these clips just to pull off, pretty straightforward, that's going to come off, that can stay on, I'm just going to pull that out of, pull that out from here and then this then just slides out and then I'm going to take it off, pretty easy. If you've got a pair of mole grips or something just to pinch off this uh, this pipe because uh, the fuel is going to come out if you haven't drained the fuel out of it so if you can pinch that off uh, whilst you do it and put it back on that's probably the easiest way unless you want to drain the fuel smallest amount of fuel luckily it hasn't gone everywhere so I'll lift this up you know what, I'm just going to take the screws out, it's going to be easier. That just slides out. There we go. Now all we've got here is the pull start cowling. Um, so we've got one 10 mil there, one there, one there, and then just underneath for the choke, uh, the choke is there. As you can see, the actuator is on the top of the carb there, and it's a, a little cable that just needs, uh, you probably can't see it in there, but there's a, there's a little wire cable sat on the top of the carb. It just needs something sticking in there a pick or something just to pull it off but you'll see it as you pull this cowling off you'll see it attached you could even do it with your finger as you take it off just something to be aware of so you don't bend the the wire as it comes up There it is. That was the uh, that was the wire that was sat on the top there. Just got to flick it off. Um, it's only sat down on there. Lift it up. It's good to go. So there we go. Now we've got everything off. You can see the top of the carb clearly. There we go. So here's the carb. And you've got the the air intake here. There's a mesh gauze in there, I think. And there's a breather pipe that goes into the engine there um, yeah there's not much here there's these these two bolts here that go all the way through the carb into the block and there's the, the inlet there's some sort of spacer here with uh, two inlet gaskets there so um, it's just these two 
uh, bolts here and the other thing to remember you've got the fuel tap kept running down there to here and if you turn the fuel tap on you can see there's a Phillips screw you need to undo that and pull this off because this will come up out of that hole once you've undone these two bolts and then she'll come off oh yes um, this here is uh, the accelerator the throttle cable so you've just got one Phillips screw there to undo and loosen off that and pull that out of there to uh, to remove the throttle cable as well and then she'll come out good as gold there we go just comes down once again I'm just putting the uh, the screw into there so I don't lose it I'm terrible at forgetting which screws and bolts go where so I always try and put them together now when you're removing these two long 10 mil bolts just try and see if you can catch the two inlet gaskets as you pull it off if at all possible there we go because they're going to be a pain to fish out um, from the bottom of the bottom cowling if you drop them probably a good idea to replace these if, uh, if this is the first time you're getting into them because once they get crushed down they don't seal that well you can just push this to one side because it doesn't need to come out so you can just push that over a little bit you can see it's got the gauze in there but it, it just goes into the, the block I think there's a rebreather in there it doesn't need to come out so just push it to one side and the carb will come out Um, so yep, yeah, just got one, two screws for the float bar. I, I never know why they don't put a screw in each corner. It doesn't seem to make sense to get a uniform pressure around the, the gasket. Maybe it just doesn't need it. Anyway, just got to whip them off and then we can get to the float bar gasket. Alrighty, that's the float bowl off. Uh, as you can see, it's a bit yellowy in there. It's obviously been, been some fuel sitting in there for a little while. Um, otherwise, uh, not too bad. It's all looking nice and clean. So, just going to give the jet uh, a clean out and a general spray around with carb cleaner. Make sure everything is working hunky dory. Um, the carb just comes off. Phillips head screwdriver in there. Un undo that. See if you can blow through it if you can, or if you've got some compressed air, blow that through there. Make sure the tiny little jet in there is clear because that will give you some issues with the running I find uh, that the, the smallest thing that will get in there which isn't going to damage it is a bristle of a wire brush um, if you pull that out uh, with a pair of pliers pull a uh, like a wire brush brush bristle out they tend to be brass and it will just go in there a treat without damaging it or making it any bigger so that's my tip for that one in the meantime, I'm just going to stick the new um, float bar gasket on there and hopefully we should have a happy running outboard. I'll keep you posted. Alrighty, that's it. She's had a clean out and uh, put the float bar back on. A nice tight float bar gasket now. And hopefully she'll be good to go. I mean, you see she hasn't had that much uh, use. It's really clean. The only dirt was in the float bowl and there wasn't any dirt, it was just the uh, the varnish from the fuel that had been sat there for a few years, but otherwise absolutely minty fresh. So we'll pop her back on, and fingers crossed, we'll have a fully working outboard. Okay, here's a really good tip that's going to save you a lot of messing around when you're putting this back in again. As you can see here is the drain tube for the uh, float bowl here. Uh, now that's going to be accessible once it's on the motor and uh, that's the, uh, the drain tube and there is a hole down there you might just be able to see and it's easy to forget that and then by the time you realize you've put everything else on and you can't get to it to make sure it goes down through that hole so as you lower the, uh, the car back down if you can make sure you can stick that rubber hose See if I can do it now, one-handed with my left hand. As you lower it down, 
be easier if I have two hands. If you can get that in, there we go. If you can get in that, that in that hole as you lower it down, you're in a much better position. And just make sure the um, the petrol tap goes down that hole as well as you lower it, and then you'll be in a position to put those bolts back in there that go through the carb and then into the into the head there, making sure you've got that spacer with the two gaskets on. It's a bit of a faff, you need a couple of hands, but if you take your time, it's not too bad. I'm gonna stop the camera now, because I'll need all of my two hands. That's in loosely now, so I've got those two bolts through, and made sure they've gone through into the block there, that's where the bolts thread into, just make sure you find the thread, take your time, and you'll be good. Right, I'm going to um, wrap this up, put the last few bits from down there back on the cowling the fuel tank and I'll show you if we can get it running fingers crossed guys and uh, thumbs up if you like it so far